Welcome to Evangelist Television Ministries with founder and host Beth Bridgers. You'll see a variety of concerts, crusades, and anointed biblical preaching and teaching with guests and special singers as we spread the awesome gospel of Jesus Christ. So now get ready to be blessed right here, right now, on Evangelist. Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful day and we're here worshiping Jesus in the open air. I'm excited. You should be too. Because we are experiencing a grace that many people in the world cannot experience. That is the public worship of Jesus. Amen? Um, whenever I travel, I don't know what I'm going to preach on until the day of. I don't prepare ahead of time, although I pray ahead of time. Uh, and I let God lead me the way he desires me to go. And I was sitting in our hotel room this morning, and uh, I just got one verse. Romans 1.16, and that's what I'm going to construct my sermon from. Because I believe it's very apropos for the season that we're living in. I don't know about you, but I'm looking at the world and even this country, and my concern grows with each passing day. Things are not as they were, and with each passing day, it's getting worse. And as I read Paul's most magnificent declaration, I couldn't help but wonder how many people calling themselves Christians today would have the same wherewithal to declare as he did, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Amen? See, there are many people calling themselves Christians today who believe that they don't have to live a Christian life in order to be Christians. There are many people encouraging them that they don't have to change their conduct, they don't have to change their speech, they don't have to change their mindset. All they have to do is wave a hand in church and be done with it. As I was contemplating this verse, I was contemplating what these few words entailed. I am not ashamed of the gospel. What does this mean? It sounds kind of generic, doesn't it? Because to many people today, the gospel is whatever they think it is. But Paul didn't say, I'm not ashamed of my gospel. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. See, there needs to be a Christ-centeredness in our lives, in our affirmations, in the things that we say. There needs to be a Christ-centeredness in the way that we live our lives so that the world sees the difference between the way they act, the way, things they say, the way they live, and the way we do it. Paul was a learned man. He was a man that probably knew more of the Old Testament than any of us ever will. But at this juncture in his life, he's writing to the Romans and he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So what does this mean? It means that we ought not to be ashamed to call Jesus Lord. Not only when we're in church, because that's the safe place. See, church is always the safe place. We're all Christians when we're in church. But many of us, when we walk out the doors, we become undercover Christians. We blend in because the world is doing its best to try to shame the followers of Christ into silence. I, for one, am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And you shouldn't be either. If you know what Jesus did for you, then you will never be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It doesn't matter how many people get on television and call us backwards. It doesn't matter how many people get on television and say that we're dinosaurs. It doesn't matter how many people get on television and say that Christianity is dying. It is not. God won't let it. Throughout history, even during the darkest of days, God had his people. In the face of persecution and certain death, God had his people. And the amazing thing is, when things got difficult, when things got hard, when men had to lay down their very lives for the cause of Christ, the church only grew. See, a lot of godless people look at Christians and they don't understand us. 
And they shouldn't be able to. Because to them, this is foolishness. But to us, it shouldn't be. See, it's not us who should accommodate the world. It's not us who should mold ourselves into the world's liking. The only desire that we should have as children of God is to be molded in an image pleasing to God. And if we're molded in an image pleasing to God, it will be offensive to the world. See, we we, we like to be peaceniks. I hate confrontation. I'm not good at it. But sometimes I'm forced into it. Because I go back to Paul's words and I have to make them real in my life as well. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So even if I need to confront somebody, I do it even though it's out of my comfort zone. Because there is no shame in me for what Jesus did. There is no shame in me for who Jesus is. Go with me to Matthew. And I know that Some of you didn't bring your Bibles. It's okay, you can bring them next time. But in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus lays out the importance of being faithful. The importance of not hiding our light under a bushel. The importance of being soldiers of the cross. The importance of being men and women who will not deny him. Because we're living in an age where men calling themselves pastors and preachers and evangelists are leading a drove of people to hell. It's the reality of the times that we're living in. See, Jesus forewarned us. He said, in the last days there will be deceivers. And in the last days there will be false prophets. And there will be men who will be so good at manipulating you that you will deny the very sovereignty of Jesus himself. And what's happening in the church today? You've got people standing behind pulpits going, well, maybe Jesus isn't the only way. Who are we to say? Well, we're the sons and daughters of God, and God said it first. And if God said it, who am I to question him? Who am I to cast doubt on the word of God simply so that the world looks upon me with joy and acceptance? Imagine how perverted a mind men must have that they compromise truth, that they betray Jesus, also that they be embraced by the world that hates them. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. If we're not in that place in our faith, we need to get there quickly. Because dark days are on the horizon. And the pressure upon Christians and the pressure upon the church is only going to grow in this country and throughout the world. And I cannot stand before an all-knowing God. I cannot stand before a God who judges without partiality and justify my denial of him in the face of persecution when others are already giving their lives for him. In case you didn't know it, people are being beheaded and crucified for the sake of Jesus. And they're not denying him. Verse 32 of Matthew 10 says this, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Amen? Words of Jesus. Didn't make them up. So what Jesus is saying is, if you deny me before men, If you're ashamed of me, or you fear for your life, or you try to spare your own skin and deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. So this whole idea that we all get to heaven eventually, that all paths lead to the same mountaintop, is ludicrous. But the church is embracing it wholeheartedly. The age of deception is upon us. And I know I can stand here and tell you my testimony, and it's pretty fascinating. I grew up in a family of Bible smugglers. I saw the power of God from a young age. I traveled with my grandpa from the age of 12. But it's not about me, and it's not about you. It's about him. And we need to reassess why we do what we do. And if Jesus is not at the core and at the center of our actions then know that one day we will answer for not making him the center of our actions. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. But many Christians today are. 
We've become apologists for what the Bible say because there are certain things that today's modern society is unwilling to accept. I am not ashamed to call sin, sin, because the Bible calls it sin. I'm not ashamed to call men to repentance, because the Bible calls men to repentance. I'm not ashamed to call the house of God to sanctification, because the Word of God calls you to sanctification. And we're given this season of peace, and we're given this season wherein we can do this without fear so that we can prepare for the season that is coming. See, the book tells us that all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I tend to be a literalist when it comes to the Word of God. You should be too. Because a lot of people will stand before God on that day and go, I didn't know, I didn't prepare. You should have. It was in the book. The Word of God warned you that all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus would suffer persecution. I read it a thousand times. It doesn't say except in America. We'd like it to be there. I'm sure eventually somebody will come out with the version of the Bible where all the verses that make us, you know, sweat and hyperventilate will be changed in a certain way where it'll exempt us from it. But the Word of God stands true whether men want to believe it or not. God is still on the throne whether men accept it or not. See, we're so full of ourselves that we think we can affect the universe. There are people who won't ride in a car or use toilet tissue because they believe that they can make the earth cooler or warmer by their action. That's self-delusion at its best. And a lot of people in the church share in that same delusion. Well, if I say God can't do it, then he can't do it. Who be you? Who be I? Who be any of us? to dictate terms to God or to say even though it's in his word it's not going to happen I would rather prepare as though everything the Bible says about the end times were true and be caught up than not prepare and have to go through it unprepared Does that make sense it's wisdom wisdom is a good thing we hope you've been greatly blessed today through Evangelfest Television Ministries. Join us anytime right here on Charter Spectrum On Demand as we praise and exalt the name of our soon-coming King of Kings, Jesus Christ.